Hi, this is Lauren Ruth Ward, and I'm hanging out with Rob from Front Row Live. 2018 was like starting to build up. People were starting to pay attention. And then it looks like 2019, you're just going to be on the road yeah. the entire year. Yeah, hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> so one, one cool thing that happened this week, I was at work, you know, minding my own business, and then my coworker comes up, and he's all like, oh, this is for you. Oh, cute. Um, I went to the show, and I was like, dude, are you serious? That's awesome. Like, oh, you're the Rob. I'm the Rob, yeah. yes. That was from Pappy's last weekend. Yes, it was. Yeah. It was. And like, he was actually, um, when, I, when I find an artist that I'm super passionate about, that I see that nobody's kind of paid attention to yet, I, try, I, I tend to be selfish and I keep it to myself until I finally rock that interview, right? So um, I hadn't really talked about you. And then all of a sudden, a couple months ago, he walks into the office and is like, Dude, I just found out about this girl, Lauren Ruth Ward. She's going to blow the What's year. Your, what was his name again? His name is Brian. Yeah, Brian, yeah. He was really nice. That's awesome. That's awesome. But yeah, I was like, it was so cool to hear someone else talk about you before, you know, the mainstream media started talking about you. So, you know, what has the better part of 2018 been for you? 2018? Yeah. Um, I mean, 2018's been a good year. I was just frustrated because... Um, uh, in 2017, right before I was about to put out my first that, that album, my yeah. first and only, um, we got signed to an indie an indie label came through, which was a subsidiary of a major label, and it was a really great deal and one of those uh, things where you couldn't really you weren't gonna know what it was gonna be like until you moved in with them right. and really saw what kind of human they were, right. um, and everyone had good intentions, but. It just didn't really work out um, for either parties. I think both parties thought it was going to be something different. So um, 2018 was just a lot of finding a flow. And then at the end of the year, I was just like talking to my my legal advisor. And was just like, you know, like this isn't working. You know, like can we just talk about like what it would like? I'm, I'm hyper creative, and that was a big issue for me. Just kind of long story short, I like to do a lot of stuff with a lot of different artists for their stuff or my right. stuff um, and even just something as simple as like acting in a short and like recording like a make a makeup I make up like a lullaby like on a voice memo is like contractually such a hassle yeah um, because so you weren't being yourself realistically I was I was able to be myself of course um, that's impossible but to not be myself but it was hard for me to be able to release stuff and we put the album out in February of last year, um, and then, you know, it was really hard for me to. Valhalla has been done since June, and right. it's just you know, and, and like I and I will say this, you know, the label that I was on, um, that team, nobody was out to get me. Nobody was malicious. It was. Uh, it just didn't work out. Totally, and it's all timing, and everybody has their own opinion of when to release stuff. I mean, it's, it's, the name of the game is yeah. all the opinions involved and. It's, there's a beauty to being uh, independent because you can release everything and if you have a day job, which I've been a, a colorist and a barber for 10 years, so um, f I'm very lucky to have that passion and trade so I can um, fund my own music videos and they won't look as good as uh, Valhalla, which I did with the label, the only, you know, the only one, but, right. um, but I got to release Valhalla independently and um, I guess it, I didn't really have any downfalls or, or upswings to 2018 it was just l a learning experience and I don't regret any of it that's, all, that's good that you have that that I'm mindset lucky. yes yeah you are. I'm lucky you are now with Valhalla like I noticed that you know the record had dropped like you mentioned in February and you were doing a couple like performances for other networks or whatever but like I noticed that Valhalla was one of them that you would perform as well yeah. um, so you've had this song for a while yeah, I mean the original album release show was um, at the bootleg September 29th and that was when we we're gonna release the album but and I had already pressed the vinyl and the CDs and done everything and the label came in uh, post um, like five weeks before that show. Yeah. So we kept the show and then they were like, you know, saw your vinyl, saw your CDs at shows, but it's it's only appropriate to, um, if you're gonna release it on a label mm -hmm. or, you know, to have a proper PR plan. And so we we prolonged it to September, October, I guess wow, it was, yeah. you know, four or five months until February. Uh, ninth is the date that we released it, um, but yeah, I kind of wanted to keep the momentum, and uh, which is what I did, which is how I formed my following in L, which is how the following in LA happened. Because you know, people like, I think that, and as a showgoer myself, because before I was 
playing the shows I was still I was always going to shows right. I still go to like you know three to seven shows a week that's uh, cool it's great inspiration great inspiration yeah um, we started playing that song at a, at that show at the bootleg and uh, it's just been yeah just been wanting to put it out which is what we did yeah. when I was po uh, pre-label I was like um, I put out like you know, make love to myself. Six weeks later, did I find you? Six weeks later, blue collar, sex kitten, etc. Sideways, well hell, and then you know, and I'm just that that tended that that seemed to work well for me, um, and I admire that. Like I was saying, you know, going to shows and seeing artists, when I see someone just kind of catch release, catch release, you know, and they're like creating and they're just creating and creating. Yeah. That's a turn on to me. It's a good momentum. It's a great yeah, it's momentum, and because I'm kind of hyper. And I like to keep doing, you know, hyper creative, I guess. Yeah. Um, it works out for me. And I think it's what the people who are interested in me, it's cool. Like, I have some fans that are like, I like acted for my first time last year uh, in two, in a, a web series called 20. Okay. And also uh, a short film uh, by, uh, directed by um, uh, Dylan Hayes, who actually did Blue Collar and uh, did I find a music video? Okay. Nice. And I got such great, you know, like fans that like at some I do know, some I don't know, like in Europe, there a lot of them, uh, I get to communicate with them on Instagram, which is so cool. <laughs> Isn't it crazy? It's really crazy. Um, <laughs> but they, uh, they're just stoked to see what I, what I'm, what, I, what I as a human am going to do next. So yeah. I was just, you know, so just being able to, I spent time with acting and Eduardo and I whipped out a, a Doors album uh, in like two months. Yeah, it was so much <laughs> fun. And everyone did it for, um, and then all the music videos. And the, it, so it was, that was, um, those thoughts were triggered out of um, frustration with not being able to release my own music mm -hmm. and sheer boredom. So, yeah. and just, you know, like, oh, okay, cool. I've got time to do that now. Right. You know, we always, I have like a creative to do list, you know? That's cool though, because I feel like, you know, there, there's artists that release too much and then there's artists that, just know how to release just enough that and I feel like that you're one of those artists that you release just enough because as you were mentioning earlier when you would release every good. six weeks like mm -hmm. it felt right yeah 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 it totally yeah and it's it's such a f fine line and such yeah. a annoying line I, I think bet. I think when you're feeling something it needs to be put out like I was we, we were sitting on um Valhalla pull string we are grown-ups and wise gal and now but now we get to put them out and I think it all happened for a reason because my my goal um, was to be able to have a visual for every music video, which right. you know, a lot of artists have that goal, I feel, uh, that I've met. Mm. Excuse me. Um, and so now I'm able to do it and not, and to be not so contractual, because um, that was another thing that I learned that, I, you know, because the in Indie Label was a substurban major they handled the paperwork and right. that took away a lot of the romance and I think it could my exact deal could work for a lot of people but it just wasn't right for me as an artist yeah. and um, now I know how to uh, understand that and vocalize it and now I know what if I were to sign to another label I know what the deal would have to be for it to be like you know good right. for for my specific thing right and it's good that you caught this on early on uh, um, before you know things got crazy you got busier and stuff like that like I, I'm sure it would have not been I'm sure it wasn't an easy process to step away from but I'm sure it wouldn't have been this this I, easy yeah you have to just because it's interesting you know I think and I'm guilty of it too you kind of equate like um, are they not on tour mm -hmm. are we, and we did like five tours last year but like um, all were like a week to two weeks um, but you know if you're not creating if you're not releasing music and you're not touring then I guess you must not be busy but I was so it's interesting I'm like what the f what the hell did I do <laughs> but I was so busy yeah. but it is um when you're in when I'm in like a new thing or just um needing to share the end result with somebody that is my thing or mm. multiple reasons I'm always checking and so it is it's a lot of effort to check in and 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 ground yourself while checking in and because right. you can't always those two don't always cross paths at the same time sometimes you're just like um <laughs> i really love your mindset i feel like a lot of people struggle to get to the point where you're at today like i feel like it, it, it takes so many trials and tribulations before they actually like do that yeah it was it was a it was a great um it was a really good deal mm -hmm. um and we used it um we the parts where we were able to um 
like the the you know the the, the advance that we got you know we 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 spent it on um uh touring mm. i paid the band and eddie bought a you know bits and pieces and gadgets for our studio so now we're going to be recording a lot of stuff in home and um so we're, we're thankful for it in many ways right. but yeah it you just have to check in and <laughs> really know what you want yeah. i'm this is this is like career number two to me so i've also i learned <laughs> <laughs> i learned i had a, a, a wedding um a hair wedding hair business wow. um when i first started doing hair okay um yeah, I used to do makeup for weddings and then start doing hair for weddings. And then, so I've been able to, I've, I've been really lucky to, um, my passions lead me to, uh, you know, learning experiences and not, I'm, I'm happy I don't have like a, I don't have a, a dis-ease for somebody right. after learning. You right, know, true. Got away unscathed. True, true. Now, with, with this music that you were kind of sitting on, the five tracks that we're about to listen to yeah. in 2019, yeah. um, you know, how do you feel your creative process kind of evolved during this time that you've been sitting on them and you know did you end up kind of having to rewrite these songs or were they already set in stone from from day one these ones were set in stone um and like i was saying the recordings they've been they've been mix mastered ready for the world uh since like june maybe july yeah. one, like the last one um yeah, the messages were done. The messages are done on paper before I go into the studio. Okay. And, um, and I'm still really happy with the recordings. Uh, my, my process didn't change. Mine and Ed's process is pretty run of the mill. Yeah. We have like a, we're, we're both from the East Coast, so I think this is such, this is kind of like a, you know, a, a sign of like our happiness is good weather and being outside. I, I used to. And it wasn't, you know, um, clinically, I wasn't, um, what's it called, um, like diagnosed, but I think I had like a little bit of uh, seasonal depression. The, okay. the cold definitely makes me retreat and I'm super yeah. social. And so, um, uh, but yeah, Ed and I like to, we start writing something. I mm -hmm. usually have a, he'll, he'll gather some guitar ideas and I'll gather my ideas and then we get together. And I think how it usually goes is like he, goes like oh that one of my ideas goes good with it you know yeah. we just we kind of bring what we what we work on cool little venn diagram that goes on in yeah sense. totally yeah Oop, i love venn diagrams <laughs> um yeah and then we'll but now actually and i guess it has changed because now we can go to ed's and we can demo yeah um and like but and we were already kind of di playing around with that we recorded all of travel man and those letters just about all of those letters at in in his first uh, studio, which was in a massive walk-in closet when he lived in Sherman Oaks, but yeah, he's and he's a composer um, and a producer, so he's just he's just getting better. But he's so awesome. But yeah, so now we get to demo songs. Now that he's he's you know getting it up, yeah. yeah, totally. And now that we have that available to us, the closet is now a bedroom. Yes. That's what it is. <laughs> yes, he, we have a we have a whole room now. That's so um, cool. I'm sure you're, you spend most of your time there when you're not on, on the road or you're not working. But, you know, as, as far as, like, you when, you, when listening to you, I feel your emotions come out. I feel, you know, when I see you live, I feel those emotions. Like, you, you release those emotions live. Um, when you are creating these songs, are those emotions kind of flowing out the same way that they are when we see it after it's a final product? Sure, because um, it's equivalent to you telling a story uh, uh, that you telling someone something that's happened to you because right. my I write the lyrics and they're they're all things I've gone through um, so I just remember it yeah you know so of course I feel like it's a um, there's a couple of things I've written about where my emotions have evolved just from growing up getting older and now I'm like I feel differently about that person or that scenario. I, I see it differently now that I'm not 22 and I'm 30, you know. It's, it's the same thing when I'm writing it as when it's on stage. Yeah. Yeah. Now when you perform these songs, like I mentioned earlier, you you release those emotions. So I'm, I'm sure that's exhausting for you. So after a live show or after a performance, like, are you mentally exhausted? And how do you, how do you kind of like recover from that? I am. Some nights more than others and not every night. Um, I'm, I get, I get physically exhausted, yeah. um, but I have to say, you know, 
Oh God, I don't even know what I do. Um, but it's not, it's not contrived. It's just what I do, you know. So um, it happened really naturally, like me, like my my physical expression, right. and um, the. It's like as much as like when I'm telling a friend if I start talking about something really exciting and get like so giddy, or if I'm talking about something really intense and I'm like, and I'm, I'm getting really mad, and I'm like, but. I, also, like, I didn't say to her like that, but I'm just pissed right now. I'm just, like, a little annoyed right now. And they'll be like, yeah, totally. But it's just, like, um, it just happens kind of naturally. I don't, I can't really um, hold it back. I do get a little emotionally exhausted. But that's usually when you have you turn a hobby into a, a career. True. And you're on tour. True. And so you have to do it, um, you know. I've had to do, like, six shows in a row. That's, like, the biggest one. And people have done way more. Um, but... Uh, still new yeah. at all this but yeah that was like um one of the nights I was just like yeah like 30 percent of this is going to be kind of memory that I know that I can do this mm. and the other 70 percent was you know natural yeah like if I could admit that just being a human right um but I'm a I'm a I'm like a game face I'm like a let's do it so yeah. I feel uh, like I got away with it as you're kind of preparing for, you know, this madness of tours that you're going to do for 2019, I feel like after these runs that have been announced so far, like, are done, I feel like there's more coming as well. Yeah, my, um, my agent, Sarah at Paradigm, she's really awesome. She gets me. Um, we've got some really good ideas. Yes, you can flush. <laughs> yeah, no, we're hearing all of this, no, like, but you can't flush. This is live right here. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, we're just we just want to tour. Yeah. yeah, and we're probably gonna be doing a lot of two-piece stuff. Okay. Um, this is really fun, Eddie. Uh, our first show tonight. Eddie's got uh, this. Is our first time doing this. Eddie's got a, a kick pedal on a suitcase, and um, I have a foot tambourine. And we're bringing lots of per we're taking care of some of the percussive elements, you know, that we get. But you know, it's it's. It's it makes it more doable for me yeah. to be able to. It's more. It's it's cheaper, <laughs> <laughs> um, and I just really want to get out there. And um, yes, we might be doing a lot of that. Mm -hmm. I am trying so hard. My a big goal of 2018 is to get to Europe. Okay. Um, I was there. I played almost two years ago. I got to actually open up for LP in France and Italy, and. Um, and it was incredible, and the fans there. I feel like um, I feel really anxious not being able to go there. I'm the one that's, you know, obviously on my socials, so right. I'm communicating with them. And you know, if I post a flyer like West Coast Tour, East Coast Tour, they're like, "When are you coming to X Y Z?" And I'm just like, it's really hard to get a to get a booking agent. Right. Um, when no one knows who the hell you are. But it's cool that people are starting it's, to figure this out. It's really cool, and it's so interesting. It's like um. Just a weird um, 2000, uh, you know, 21st century thing that, like, yeah. how can you have X amount of fans but no booking agent? You know, right. it's just because they're all different. There's just so many different ways that it could all happen. Um, it's baby steps. It happens. I mean, you're tour managing your own tour. Like, that's insane. I feel like that is uh, already insane in itself. People, a lot of people do that at my, um, at my level. Yeah. 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 Um, and if I need, like, someone to drive the car like I've, I'll get help you know like yeah. anybody in my band um, they will like drive if I need a break and stuff right. but I also don't mind having um, control of something that's my responsibility I don't mm. makes me feel at ease for those fans that are not familiar with you yet like why did you kind of start creating music why is music so important to you it heals me that's you know we are all, I started out listening to music you know <laughs> it's like these sentences very simple sentences um yeah, and I had a kind of a traumatizing childhood, mm. and music healed me, you know. It's so, it's, it's already been said, but it's just, that's it. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Well, thanks for hanging out with me. Yeah. I'm excited to see you live tonight. I'm super excited for that. So you guys be sure to check out Lauren Ruth Ward. New single, Valhalla, is out now. New music coming real soon. She's going to be touring the world 2019. Be sure to check her out. Thanks for watching here on Front Row Live.